I've shown that video before, and uh, it's just as irritating the second time as it was the first time. But maybe that's the point. Maybe the point is to irritate us because of our beliefs about uh, certain things in our lives as Christians. I've noticed we have uh, become easily irritated, very defensive when it comes to talk of our, our money. I've come to believe that along with uh, the challenge of trying not to gossip, love of money is the biggest problem facing Christians. And here's the even bigger problem. We're all in denial about it. We don't think it's a problem. We don't think those words of Jesus, you cannot serve God and money, really pertain to us. So who do you serve? I'm not here really to talk about money. I needed a chance to uh, regroup on my throat because I'm losing my voice. So it ties in slightly to what I want to talk about. But what I want to talk about is this. should be a picture appearing before you. America's Got Talent. How many of you have seen that show? You've seen that show? Okay. Um, if you haven't seen this show, and even if you have, it's, it's where contestants gather and they battle uh, to uh, convince the judges, Simon is one of them, that they indeed have talent. And if you've watched it, you've noticed that sometimes Simon doesn't think people have talent even before they show their talent. Have you ever seen one of those episodes? A guy comes out and he's going to sing and you're looking like, this dude is not going to sing. And when he sings, it is not going to be good. So Simon will uh, say, you know, you don't have talent. And then he sings. You have watched the show maybe and said after they have exhibited their talent, uh, you don't have talent, right? Well, we're going we're gonna to play a similar game of uh, America's Got Talent today, only we're going to call it this. Christianity's Got Talents. You ever heard of that show? That's uh, because it's not really a show, right? doesn't uh, involve singing and dancing. It doesn't involve jumping. It doesn't invo involve magic. It involves a different kind of talent. The kind of talent that Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 25 in a story that he or has become to be known as the parable of talents. So we'll get right to the definition. What is a talent? I asked you earlier, think about what your talents are. After the sermon, you might change your definition, but a talent in this story is uh, referring to money. It's a Greek amount of money. The Greeks had two basic kinds of money. They had the denarius, maybe you've heard of that, a denarii or a denarius, and they had talents. Here's what they were worth. A denarius was worth a day's wage. One day's worth of work, you would get a denarius. A talent was 7,300 denarii. Now, for you math geeks, there's a big difference between a denarius and a talent. A talent is 20 years' worth of wages. 20 years. Now, I'm thinking, what can I do with 20 years of wages? Yeah. So, in this story, Jesus says... The master, the owner, gives out to three of his servants various amounts of this money. To one, he gives one talent, which is, again, 20 years' worth of wages. To another, he gives two talents, which is 40 years' worth of wages. To a third, he gives five talents, which is worth 100 years of salary. Now, I think there are several things that we can take note from this story. First of which is, the very beginning, Jesus says the owner or the master calls his servants, his workers, to him. They had a relationship. They knew each other. It wasn't just somebody off the street. There was a relationship that had been built. Second of all, not all of the workers got the same amount. They didn't get the same amount. One got... 20, 40, 100, you know, one, two, five. And what does Jesus say that this is based on? Did you catch that? Their ability. Now, you go ahead and try this at home, especially if you have small children. 
Give one of your kids, you have to have multiple kids, by the way. And here's a saying, I have the more kids you have, the better chance one will actually turn out. <laughs> so I have four, and I'm wondering. I'm, I'm a little nervous about that. All I need is 250. All right, so try this at home. Give out one to one child, two to another, and five to another. Or maybe in the workplace, if you're in position of authority, what will be the common cry of our culture, our families, our workplace? That's not fair. I think this is important for us to understand, though. Jesus says he gives out according to each's ability. Now, before we get too caught up in it not being fair, regardless of what you receive in this story, it's a lot. It's a tremendous amount of money that we're dealing with. So what do these three servants do? You know the story. Two invest, and they get a 100% return. That's my kind of stock market. 100% return. But the third, one, does not do anything with his talent, his money. Why? Well, he says, he claims that he's afraid. He's afraid, and so he lets his emotions get the best of him. His fear distracts him, and so he does nothing. Well, how does that go for him? We find out that he's called slothful. His one is taken away, and this is a part of a gospel reading. You know, the gospel, that's, that's good news. I love it when you have to read the gospel reading, and it ends with weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Yeah, there's going to be somebody destroyed. This didn't work out well for him. It's an interesting story. But why does Jesus tell it? Does he want to teach us about money? I don't think so. The parable isn't primarily about money. It's about fear. It's about distractions. It's about accountability. It's really about that servant who got one. The accountability that God gives to all of us. You know that regardless of the blessings that we've received from God, we have a relationship with him, just like the workers to the owner. We have a relationship with God. And regardless of the amount, he has blessed us. He has blessed us tremendously. And he asks us to be accountable to those blessings. And maybe we don't think of it this way. Well, okay, the first thing we're going to think about based on that video and the gospel reading is that we need to, we need to use our money more wisely and, and we need to give it to the church or give it to some organization. But that's kind of, it's missing the point. The most important blessing that you should manage is the gift of faith. The relationship that God started, created, sustains with you there were some people that came to Jesus and said, what's the greatest commandment? And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Be passionate about your relationship with the Lord. And then he says, a second is like that. Love your neighbor as yourself. See, maybe we don't think of that as a talent or a blessing or as a gift from God. But it is significant. We ought not bury it. We ought to exercise it, use it, invest it. But maybe we become a little bit like that uh, servant who got one, and we look around and we think, well, they got, they got that, and they got this. They don't have that problem. They don't have this. They don't, they don't have the problems I got. And we, we, not, we, we don't so much become afraid, but we become irritated with God. And we think he's not fair. We get distracted. Maybe we get worrisome. But, but all of this leads to really a selfish attitude. That was the problem of that servant who got one. He was selfish. And there's irony in this story because he doesn't realize he's selfish. Who does he think is selfish? The owner, the master. Oh, you're such a hard boss. You reap what you do not sow. You're just a bad guy. And the irony is, Dude, he just gave you 20 years worth of wages. You're part of his team. 
So sometimes we get a little selfish, we get distracted and worrisome, and we don't pay attention to our own relationship with our Lord. But he provides those opportunities, right? The word of the Lord has endured forever. The church still stands, and Jesus told the disciples, the church shall never fail. That's an unbelievable promise. So we have opportunity to come together. We have opportunity to receive the sustenance that is the meal that Jesus gives to us. That strengthens our relationship with him. And you know what happens as our relationship strengthens with the Lord? We're propelled and compelled to invest our talents in other people. And it may not seem like much, but the Lord promises a return on the investment Whether you've been blessed one-fold, two-fold, or five-fold, please don't leave here thinking that you have not been blessed tremendously. My cup runneth over kind of blessings. And maybe it's a little easier for us to think about this because I think there's a holiday coming up where we're going to have thanksgiving and we're going to think about all the blessings we have. Be reminded of this story. Be reminded about how the relationship that God has with you, he has tremendously blessed you. And he wants you to share those blessings with others so that much like in this story, the kingdom might be multiplied and others may hear that invitation of the Lord, the sweet words of Jesus. Come, enter into the joy of your master. May God make it so for you in your faith life both this day and forevermore. Amen.